Hi, it's Dr. Games, and I wanted to talk to you about something that I know has been an issue for some of our viewers, and that is you have a, a Nitsi DVD that won't play in something that's designed for a PAL player, or you've got a PAL, you've got a PAL DVD that won't play in a Nitsi player. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk you through solutions that run the gamut from simply making something region free to actually recoding it if you have to. Uh, this is not going to be a super long video, probably about 10 minutes or so, because uh, I find that it's actually easier to solve this problem than I thought it was going to be. So as you can see in the picture on the screen, uh, I just recently received this giant box of Babylon 5 materials. Uh, great DVDs, uh, has everything, all five seasons of the series, as well as the specials, the movies, the, the pilot, uh, everything in the follow-on series, everything you would want with Babylon 5. It was a big deal back in the early 90s. I just never had a chance to watch it. Super well done, been critically acclaimed. So you say to yourself, well, what's the issue? So I, uh, I tried to play it in my player, and lo and behold, I got the following message. And what is really the issue here? The problem is not that it is a PAL, because most of the Blu-ray players out there will play uh, not only Nitsi or PAL format, but all kinds of things that are specifically just for Blu-rays and cinematic production. The problem is that little 2 up there, it's region 2, and that is preventing it from playing. So I'm going to show you two ways of dealing with that. So without further ado, I'm going to cut over to live action on my system, and I will go ahead and splice that in. Okay, so as I said, most of your Blu-ray players will actually play things in Nitsi format, they'll play things in PAL format, and that's worldwide. If you have a Blu-ray player, it will play either way. So if you've got a Blu-ray player and you put it in and it says, hey, this region can't play here, the way you do that, notice that I've got a, I've got my uh, video in there and I've gone into the video TS. As you know, there's a video and an audio TS one. Uh, audio was for audio uh, DVDs, uh, which never really took much at the market. You may have an old <laughs> one that has it, that has the audio section, but most of them only have the video piece. And then what you're going to do, I'm using IFO Edit, and I'm using version 0.971. I think that's the newest version. Um, this has been out of production now for years, although you can find online versions of it. The same caveat I always give to you when you download software, not everybody has your best interest at heart. Be very careful, run it through a virus scanner, only download from reputable sites. But this is a freeware program, uh, IFO Edit, that was put together. I found about it at the Doom 9 forum, which is just a great group of technical experts in all things video. Now when you get in here, when you open it up, you're just going to go open and then it's going to have you go to the IFO file. I guess I, I will demonstrate that. So in this particular case, um, as I said, I'm in the, the DVD, I'm in the video TS subfolder, and then within that it will only show the IFO files. You're going to want the main video TS IFO file. I've already loaded it here. And once you loaded that in, you're going to go to the video manager information management table, because that's where everything is. 
when you first start off it shows just the this broad uh, introduction to what it is so it shows that it's actually uh, PAL format so it's 720 by 576 as opposed to NITSI which would be 720 by 480 um, it's showing you that the uh, uh, that it has a uh, different uh, frames per second rate etc uh, and in this particular case uh, it's got it's only got one title um, and just because it's that one that's one show on there and it's, and it's got all these things so it's got subtitles in English it's got audio in English it's got the pal and again it's old it, it doesn't it wasn't even extended it was a four by three so we'll go here double click on that opens it up and the first thing you're gonna go down is find region it's address 23 now this used to have something quite different in here but what you can do in the IFO edit program is click on region free click on region free and then you're gonna wanna save you're gonna wanna save your new DVD in a location so that's what I did I made it region free and ta-da it played in my blu-ray device once I burned this new DVD that was region free now you say well, I don't have a Blu-ray player. I just have a DVD player. What do I do then? <clears throat> well, I'm glad you asked. Because that was the original path they went. And <laughs> I said, oh, I'll just put in the DVD player. And that's actually much more complicated, but we're going to do a break break. Let's say you only have a DVD player that's either PAL for things like Region 2, or you have a NITSI player that's only good for Region 1. Okay, well then you've got to use my old friend FFmpeg. So what we're going to want to do is you're going to look in that file. Let's see if I can bring one up here. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. I'm doing this in real time. So uh, let's see. Open in new low window. There we go. It was it was ready to bite me so as I said here's the structure of the DVD it's got an audio piece which almost always nothing in it and the video TS by the by if you want me to do a little segment sometime on audio DVDs I can but it's more or less kind of a museum piece etc so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to look for whatever your uh, your big files are your VOBs typically when it's this when it starts off with a much smaller one like this is only eight uh, megabits and a and a smidge and then the rest of these are gigabyte 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 and a smidge that almost certainly means that this first fob is really just nothing but menu items and pop-ups and buttons and that type of thing and the main movie starts here just wanted you to look at that structure because what you're going to want to do is in your FFmpeg you're going to want to do the following. First thing is you'll want to concatenate those VOBs. And obviously you want to do it with, <laughs> you want to do it with the, the, uh, the right, um, in this particular case, it's VTS01. It, in your particular one, it could be 2 or 3 or all the way up to 99. You just got to look for the one that has the largest amount, has the largest amount of gigabytes. That is the sequence you want. And I have it set up going all the way out to VTS 016. In this particular case, guess what? I wouldn't do that because that one 5 and 6 don't exist. So I would have stopped with 4. And then, and I'm going to put these in the uh, the comments. And then I, it, you want to show, you want to map it. And the way you're going to do that is the first time you run this, you're just going to do FFmpeg-I, and you're going to stop right there. And in fact, um, I'm going to stop the video now, and I'm going to show you what it looks like, because I, I, I don't want you guessing about how that's all going to work. So I actually have the command right here. You know, I'll just, I'll just roll it so you can see it in real time. It's not that hard slash d i'm in the command window cd slash d uh, i believe that's the that's the 
D drive, I think. Let's see. Yep. Yay. So I'm going to I'm going to go into the uh this is a, a trick by the way. You can just as soon as you get to it uniquely identify put an asterisk, it'll take you there. Let's just make sure. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am I'll actually start a new a new line. So I'm going to take this I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go on to a new line. I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to get rid of those last two. And then I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you actually what I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this. I'm hitting Control C. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to go here to my command screen. And then I am going to right click and paste. It won't let you use control V on here. So I'm going to right click paste and then we're going to do this. It's running. It's actually going to go through and uh, try to concatenate them all. This is important though. The only thing you care about, the only reason I did this is notice it shows that stream 00, zero often that's the video by the way, but in this particular case it's a D DVD nav packet which you're not going to want. So what you really want to know is that the video, which is in MPEG to video format, is at 0 colon 1. And the audio is at 0 colon 2. Very important. So when I go back up here, whoops, when I go back up here to the rest of it, and I'll just copy and put that in. Let's see, here we go. I'm going to put that there. Control V. Notice that I got this is the video and I use the MPEG to video codec. So codex video, MPEG to video, target PAL DVD, video.mv2. So I'm that's a, a basic video stream. Then I'm going to map 0 2, which I know is the audio, and I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to put it out in Dolby format. And so this is a way of doing, of stripping the streams off. Now, in other videos that I've put out, I've used things like uh, uh, PGC DMOX or I've used other tools to do this. But I have found when I've been doing this uh, NITSI and PAL conversion, it's better to do it right in FFmpeg. And notice I'm not trying to change the format. Super important. I'm not trying to change the format. You could try to convert within FFmpeg and go from PAL to NITSI or back and forth. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, this will actually operate super quickly. It runs at about 10 to 15 speed. And at the other end of it, wherever you, because you can put the, uh, you can put the path where you want it inside the quotes. In this particular case, it will just put it in whatever directory you're in, which you run it in. But uh, that said, you always want to make sure you actually have your output files on a different hard drive, if at all possible. It'll save you. It'll speed it up by a factor of three to four. But at the other end of that. I'm going to have the video in M2V format PAL and the audio is just going to be in uh it's going to be irregular in Dolby. In this particular case it was in uh 51 surround. Then then what we're going to do is we'll take those two files that we've put together and we'll turn them will turn them into NITSI in a separate command. Separate command. Why does it work better to do it that way? Ah. But I, I have, I'm telling you right now that I have done this many, many times. And uh, if you try to do it all in one, you're going to get all kinds of artifacts and you're going to get uh, sync issues and all kinds of things. So do it separately. Uh, also, you can uh, make sure it works as well. You can take a look and, 
and do a quick run through and make sure it works. Then you take those two output files that you've gotten and that they would be inserted in here. Um, in this particular case, it, it would have just been video and audio, but this was an older time I ran it. I had video file that M m2v and input audio file 80.ac3. And then I use this advanced filter, which you've seen in my other videos, that allows it to sync a hundred times a second to make sure that it's it's all in it's all synced. And now I'm putting my target as Nitsi DVD. Just to foot stomp it, I've also added the uh, the frames per second, 29.97. You can also do that as a uh, 1001 divided by 30. And the size is 720 by 480. And then I go out MPEG. So at the other end of this, I can take this and put this into any simple DVD creation product. And at the other end of it, I have a completely usable Nitsi DVD. And guess what? If I had a Nitsi DVD and I was trying to go to PAL, what would I have done differently? Well, I would have done almost exactly the same, except this would have said Nitsi DVD here when I first extracted it. And then, ta-da, when I got to the other end, I would have target PAL DVD, rate 25, and then I would have the, the PAL size, 720 by 520, and out. And the same thing, I could have burned it in that. So that's a, a quick and dirty. Uh, many, many of you have had issues in the past. I've, I've gotten some emails from people saying, how do I go between PAL and NITSI and NITSI to PAL? The real answer is most of the time you don't have to because if you have a Blu-ray player, it will take NITSI format, it'll take PAL format. The issue is region. We talked about how to make something region free. If you verily you still actually have an old DVD player, which by the by Dr. Games has, that won't play one or the other, then you can go through this pretty straightforward and simple uh, coding process. Anyway, I've done this many, many times. It works perfect. And uh, there have been absolutely uh, no issues, no artifacts, etc., using this methodology. Thank you, creators of of uh, freeware FFmpeg. I use it all the time. All right, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and uh, help keep Dr. Games going. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye bye.